My name is Kai. I'm the CEO and co-founder of VI. We're a mobile video SSP. And I'm here to tell you our story, the industry's story over the last seven years. So we started in 2008 as a video publisher. Uh, Viewster, I don't know if you've seen it, heard about it. Um, we show millennials TV series, a lot of anime, a lot of it over mobile. We quickly found out that we had more demand for advertising than we had ad opportunities available. And we started in 2011 what's today known as a publisher trading desk. Only at the time we didn't have a term for it. And really what it meant was extending audiences off the publisher onto third parties and we had a big team selling on the one side and doing ad operations on the other side. So we acquired other pubs and that grew into what is VI today. In experiencing this and attracting audiences largely on mobile, we were not alone. It was going on through the whole industry. Today we would call it the big pivot to video. At the time, all this wasn't so clear, but people started to watch more content on their mobile phones. What remains true to date is that print is the most overfunded ad platform, and TV is just about funded at an equilibrium with the audience. The only trouble is that audience is aging and it's declining overall, whereas the mobile audience is ever increasing. And we found this starting 2011, but other people found it too. And they piggybacked onto this growth curve that you see. Um, it also happened on desktop, but the, the highest growth really kicked in on mobile. From there sprang up a ton of opportunities. If a platform's underfunded, that means it needs intermediaries to create a business. Boy oh boy, did many companies get on the bandwagon to jump into that opportunity. The only trouble was that people were kind of getting greedy about the opportunity. And often enough, a premium advertiser, a brand advertiser, would try to buy an impression that was full screen, mobile, premium, on a premium publisher. And effectively, the inventory kind of ran through this cloud in the middle of middlemen. Often, nobody really knew how many middlemen. And in the end, the ad would land up as a small player ad on some completely different site sometimes even a slightly unsavory publisher. That whole business was then termed by the industry the great washing machine. Advertisers thought they were buying amazing quality. Effectively, they got something a lot less valuable than what they had thought they were buying. It was almost like you could have locked maybe half the ad tech companies at the show in the room and they would have happily done business with one another, arbitraging one another without the final buyer or the final publisher in sight on either, on either side of the equation. And clearly this didn't make sense to the most premium publishers, nor did it make sense to the most premium advertisers. So the first guys to push back heavily were the biggest spenders, the CPG guys. You've seen Unilever, P&G, push back to say, no, this is not how we're going to spend our money. People need to follow strict rules, how the inventory is sourced, how it is vetted. Guess what? The media agencies also got in on this and they said, wow, this is fantastic. We'll start trading desks. We're going to buy inventory and recycle it and then sell it onto the agencies. So between the publisher and the advertiser, miraculously, 70% of the value of a media budget disappeared in the middle. Clearly, that's an untenable state for the inventory. If it's 30%, maybe 20%, 
that get attributed to the middle for vetting inventory, for transacting it, for holding auctions, that is okay but 70% is clearly overshooting the mark. Consumers on their part started to say, well, I'm actually seeing too many ads, I'm not liking this. And they started to introduce ad blockers on desktop, but also in mobile browsers. And you can see the, the curve is staggering. And there's companies here out of Cologne, like Adblock Plus, that are helping this phenomenon. While as an ad tech company, I hate it. As a consumer, I can only say, yeah, I kind of get it. The industry overdid it. In the early years, you can see there was a relatively small number of transactions. I, I would say there wasn't a ton of action. The action really began in 2014 going forward. Then it wasn't called industry consolidation. It was literally around three themes, the M&A. It was around completing tech stacks. So completing abilities that not every company had, so they wanted to round off their tech stacks. That was one. The other one was getting scale in countries where companies did not have scale previously. That was the second dominant theme, so cross-border. And the third were data-driven transactions that really made for the biggest chunk of M&A deals in ad tech all around data and what you're seeing now is kind of marriages I mean this year hasn't played out but you're seeing marriages out of necessity I would call them because this cloud in the middle taking 70 percent has gotten too big there's too many players taking too much out of the value chain and not adding enough value by themselves Digital advertising is still growing, even with all the noise and the clutter of the big CPG companies reducing budgets and enforcing different spending rules. Of course, digital is in full swing, the industry is growing, but it demands a different kind of middleman. We believe it demands full transparency, it demands a shorter value chain between the publisher and the advertiser. It demands that you cut the end user into the equation. You can't just cram ads down their throats and hope for the best. Thank you.